is the hottest serial killer in town. Please welcome Michael C. Hall. <laughs> Talking heads to get you out here. <laughs> uh, nice to have you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, it's a pleasure. Uh, you've been to the UK before, I imagine, have you? Are you a regular uh, visitor? Only once. When oh. I was in the eighth grade on a class trip, we were here for uh, my mother and I and some other people for a night. Wow. How, how old is that eighth grade? Uh, what, uh, what I was age? probably a 13. 13 year old like boy in London with your mum. Yeah, uh, yeah, what did, yeah. <laughs> what did you remember of that trip? What do you remember of the... Well, uh, I really, it was our first stop on a tour of Europe. I had a really bad jet lag, so I don't remember much of it. I know that my mom did get us tickets to go see Starlight Express. I was sitting on the front row of the balcony, I remember, and I would nod off and wake up as they'd skate by. <laughs> um, that's pretty much the extent of what I remember. I went to see Cats once. I didn't enjoy it very much. Really? Well, I don't see actors pretend to be cats. Actors yeah. are sometimes hard work anyway, aren't they? But when they're pretending to wash themselves and lick their own genitalia, <laughs> that's not my idea of entertainment. No, no. And I... then they come out into the audience, so I don't think they should come near you. Well, the, the, I remember hearing something about someone complaining about uh, one of the cats getting a little too personal. and really? uh, Yeah, there was some sort of lawsuit, I think, yeah. it went away. If that happens, you're going to see cats, I think you are allowed to grab the actor and have him spayed. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the thing, though, I was surprised to find out. Well, I, uh, you're a very, uh, very handsome man, you must be aware of this, and I yeah. know a lot of young ladies uh, <laughs> well, you might as well. Why, why fight it? I, I, well, I, I'm only saying yes because you've been talking about it quite a bit. I and know, I appreciate what's, it. What's happening to you? I must be coming out or something this evening. I just didn't realise it. Um, but uh, I know I, I googled you. Really? I googled you. Have you googled yourself ever? Uh, I confess I have googled myself. You've got to google yourself, okay. Uh, but I was uh, amazed when it came up because the number of the, you know, you can see not only there's a, a site with information about you and movies and TV you've been in and so on and so forth, but also questions that people have put on the web about you. And there's an awful lot from fan groups of women saying, is he married? Is he single? Is he gay? Is he married? Is he just really uh, got the hot sphere? That must be yeah, quite, yeah. A, quite a nice experience. <clears throat> I suppose so. I mean, uh, I guess it has something to do with the characters I've played. I mean, yeah. I played a gay, gay character on Six Feet Under. And um, maybe that has to do with why that speculation is a little more. Because okay. uh, you played a gay undertaker, didn't you? I did. Okay. Uh, how, did the, uh, how did the gay community uh, react to your interpretation? And how did, if there is indeed such a thing, the undertaker community react to your interpretation? <laughs> I was amazed at how many people approached and said they worked in a funeral home or had worked as an embalmer. A lot of people do it. People don't talk about it generally, yeah. but if you play one on TV... It's but, kind of uh, a conversation stop at parties. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> the gay community seemed very appreciative. I think they appreciated the character's existence, period. Yeah. You know, that he was multidimensional and not just the, you know, friendly neighbour upstairs with the little dog or whatever it was. Uh, a real person and a crucial person in the, in, in the drama. Right. Uh, did you study, did you go into uh, the, the sort of Undertaker environment to study before you played the part? Did you sort of soak up that? <laughs> That Atmos and, and what goes on there? I had certainly been a patron of funeral homes when I'd gone to see dead bodies of relatives, yeah. but uh, I didn't really do a lot of hands-on research. I watched some documentaries, but uh, I think for me, if, if I knew it was a fake dead body, I was happy to pretend it was real, but spending time with real dead bodies was something I it's didn't want to do. It's not a nice I went to a, a, a drive through mm. funeral parlor in uh, Louisiana once. Really? Yeah, they have a drive through funeral parlor down there. How does that work? <laughs> you drive through and there's the person propped up in the window. Oh, 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 perfect. You don't even have to get out of the car. Yeah, yeah. and you pay your respects in probably the least respectful way imaginable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this place actually exists. Wow. But it's kind of what makes America great, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the drive through in all um, forms. Uh, let's talk about Dexter now, because Dexter, I'm, I don't spoil it for me, because I know we have season three is about to start over here, uh, but I'm only up to season two. Uh, but the people who aren't familiar, and obviously a lot of people here are, but there's a lot of people who might not have seen Dexter's over here yet. Uh, how would you describe the character? He's a, he's a very unusual line of work, and there's a, there's a very neat twist to it, of course. Yeah, he works as a forensic analyst, a blood spatter analyst by day in Miami. Um, he's sort of hiding in plain sight, and that by night he indulges in his compulsion to kill people. But uh, he doesn't just kill anyone, does he? He kills only uh, arguably deserving parties, yeah. reprehensible people. His father, or foster father, recognized his <laughs> homicidal tendencies when he was very young and cultivated in him the belief that he had no choice but to kill, but that he could take responsibility for that compulsion and kill only killers. It's a, well, it's a very cool series. 
Uh, it's good fun. It's very gripping as well. And, of course, it's quite bloody. And now, yeah. when you're... Those scenes, obviously, I guess, when you're shooting, it's like anything, it doesn't feel as real as it does. When we see them, we see it all put together. Uh, but it must <coughs> kind of be weird when you're working in a scene with a... Because those, those... I'm assuming they're not real corpses. No, no, no. no. They're, so uh, they're prosthetics. Yeah. So they're prosthetic figures, but they're kind of pretty realistic, aren't they? They're remarkably realistic, yeah. I mean, I, if... I know that they're fake, and it's really easy to believe that they're real. Uh, th th there's a... Uh, there's one uh, that we reused, we came back to it. Uh, it was a flashback, and it's a guy who's all hacked up, one of Dexter's first kills. And uh, everybody was on the crew was looking at him, saying, do we recognize this guy? Is he the one we used before? And people were examining his, his face and his disembodied arms and his torso. And only when they lifted up and looked at his genitals were people like, yeah, that's the one. It was interesting. <laughs> so they all, that, that, that made a big impression. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. It's a scary moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the show isn't, isn't, isn't all heaviness, you know? It's funny. How do you prepare for something like that? Because what a, uh, an unusual character. He, you've got someone who kind of can exist, and I guess this is what, um, you know, psychopaths do or sociopaths do. You, mm -hmm. He can exist in normal society during the daytime, but then he has this compulsion this urge and does something which he kind of knows is wrong, but he can't stop himself. Right. Uh, do you have tricks that you use for that, or are there kind of devices or methods that you do, or do you base yourself on anyone at those stages? <laughs> I mean, I read transcripts of interviews with serial killers, books by FBI profilers. Um, ultimately, there's an imaginative leap required with something like this, unless you're willing to commit a felony. But um, is there something in common with those people that you've read, or something in common with their motives or their behavior that you think, okay, I can latch onto that, <clears throat> something that you've well, learned? Well, a from? lack of remorse, certainly. I mean, I think Dexter is, is, is singularly unique, sort of a fantastical character. I didn't, in my research, encounter anyone quite like him. There, there, well, there's no one who's... There, there are no likable serial killers in real life, of right. course. You know, uh, that, that is fiction. But, uh, but I'm curious, because it is a fascinating subject, isn't it? You know, yeah. the, the fact that people do it again and again. One thing I did do, I tried to get a sense of what it felt like to stalk people. So when I was living in New York, when I was getting ready to do the show, and I would go out to a restaurant or a bar and find someone who seemed to be alone and endow them with reprehensible characteristics and follow them Are you sure you want to tell around. this story in front of an audience <laughs> with cameras going? I didn't you... follow them home. I just wanted to see what it felt like to follow someone covertly. It was really easy. <laughs> How often have you indulged in this behavior? <laughs> like three times. Three times? Long time ago. That's twice more than you needed to, really. You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you liked it a bit, didn't you? I did, a little bit. <laughs> did they not see you following? I mean, how, no. how far away do you have to follow someone? I always tried to stay at least like a quarter of a block away. Yeah. And did, you, did they ever turn around and you said, oh, pretend to do my shoelace up or look in a shop window? What do you do? Or... No, no, just, uh, just, just, just made sure I didn't make eye contact. And where did you bury the bodies? <laughs> hey, Michael, how old are you, Michael? 38. 38, 38 years old. 38. 38 years old. You look very uh, young for 38. Are you beginning to feel your age at all? Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Hangovers are worse. You should stop drinking. You're right. <laughs> what about your knees? <laughs> my knees? My knees are okay. You know, it was recommended to me by, by an actor who came to visit us at school who'd had lots of these. He said the best thing you can do as an actor is take care of your knees. Okay. So I try to. How, how do you take care of your knees? Um, can I just say, I've never asked that question before on this show. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm genuinely quite excited. Yes, I do this I feel a lot. Like I'm going off into uncharted toes. You just warm them up. Yeah. Do you take uh, the glucosamine? Do you take uh, fish oil? Those kind of I, I try to. I mean, I have those things in my fridge, but I don't take them regularly. Have you ever had your back waxed? I have not. <laughs> Can we do that now? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking of getting mine done quite soon. I Are you really? If you'd like to make a date of it. Um, we'd go and film it and... No, no, just hang out together. And... <laughs> What's wrong with me tonight? I'm acting like a lunatic. It's quite all right. Michael, I'm thrilled you came on the show. Thank well, you thanks. so much. Thanks. Uh, when do you do you... I guess you finished series three. You we finished it? the third. It's aired in the States. We go back uh, late May to start shooting the fourth. Okay. How long? Obviously, fans will want to see you going for quite a while, but how long do you intend doing it? Do you know if... Uh... They've, uh, they've signed us on for a fourth and a fifth season. At the end, though, he's going to have to get caught, cool, isn't he? It's going to have to resolve itself in some sort of satisfying I know, way. I know how it'll end. Tell me. He'll kill himself. Kill himself. Well, you know, he said that, that that's a reprehensible idea to him, but you never know. I bet he does. I'm <laughs> <laughs> bet. I bet... OK, I'm going to make a proper bet with you now. All right. Right. I'll shake your hand on this, the proper day. If he winds up killing himself, you have to come back on the show and show us your waxed back. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Michael C. Hall, ladies and gentlemen.
A splendid sport. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, I'm going to let you know me, Oh, God, it's all right. It's all right. Michael, see you all later, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, sir.